Hello, hello. Today I'm taking I'm taking whoever wants to come and watch me on Facebook uh, on a tour of our nursery. And we've got a um, quarter of a million plants here. We've got over 3,000 varieties of plants. And, um, and, and if you're interested in plants and if maybe you, you live a long way away and you wondered if it was worth crossing town or coming down from the country to have a look at our nursery, this will help you make that decision. You'll see, you'll see an enormous range of plants, all different sizes and prices, lots of good deals. A uh, bit of fun, you, you'll find things, you'll be inspired. You'll be, it, it's really quite a, an amazing nursery. Cool. Awesome. Um, well, let's just wait for a couple more people to get in here. <clears throat> Thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Heather. Um, let us know what you're excited to see today. Cool. Good day. Righty. Yeah, I'm doing Just something for the next 20 two minutes, more minutes or so. What did we'll you get need? Started. Hi, how are you? Hi. I bought this plant before. Uh, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, we're just about to get started. Not, not, not um, we're starting out the front not here. Not and we will make our way through the nursery. So just one more minute, and we'll be on a roll. Leave us any questions you have. We're going to try and answer them as we walk through the nursery because we're going to be covering a lot of plants and a lot of different types and varieties. And um, we would love to answer them as you have them for us. So be quick and we will get onto them straight away. So drop us a like if you're keen for the live today, guys. Cool. All right, let's so, make a start, Chris. Where are we going first? Okay, so we're heading off on the tour and come down here. And right at the front, we have... Yep, what's here? Right at the front, we have our frontal display. And, and the frontal display consists of some of our best bargains and most exciting things. And, and for instance, we have here, have a look at this. This is our Gardens for Everyone promotion. This is an ongoing promotion, goes all the time. When you go to your local nursery, you'll often find that um, that a small cottage type plant or sort of border plant or ground cover or something like that uh, all cost 10, 12, 14, 15 bucks. And we have a really good range here at 6.99. There's all sorts of things, salvias, carnations, all sorts of stuff here, all for 6.99. And, cool. and it's great for people who need to, I had a lady in just before and she wanted to um, put her house on the market and I was able to, uh, to offer her these. She wanted, you know, she needed lots of plants to, to brighten up the garden straight away. Mm -hmm. so, so this is as, and then over the back here, you'll see standard roses. Now, often you go to your local nursery and you want 10 of one or 20 of another or something like that. And here you'll find there's a couple of thousand standard roses, all different colors and varieties, three foot and two footers, starting at 20 bucks. And, and, they're, and, they're, um, and it's a great, chance to get you know lots of one rose for are a they, good price are they regular roses or uh yeah they're, they're like you the main one we sell is iceberg of course and then we sell okay. all the main popular varieties things like just joey gold bunny that sort of thing yeah okay. and, and the thing is that those ones are, are, are good to buy because they're bare rooted so they're easy they're cheap to buy they're easy to transport and we have a big range of bare rooted roses awesome and that's yeah. only this time of year isn't yeah, it yeah yeah cool yeah okay so now we go through here and we have a little cottage section. Over there I've got succulents and jade plants. And, and the front is a real mishmash of all sorts of specials, like um, you've got uh, all sorts of bits and pieces we've grown ourselves or going cheap or something like that, all the, all the popular stuff. And what's interesting, a lot of people come here and they've never been here before, and they, they, look at, they look at this frontal display and they think this is not a bad little nursery here because we've got this big shed here at the front and they come in and they shop here and they're, they're quite happy and then what happens, we'll come up here and I'll show you what happens, it's quite, it's quite interesting. Uh, what happens is that, um, is that they, they go through and they're, they're, they're quite satisfied with, there's quite a big range out the front here in what we call our frontal display, they're quite satisfied with this frontal display and um, and um, they're quite satisfied with the frontal display. And then what'll happen is that they'll go out the back and they're stunned because the back's about 50 times bigger. And they thought that this, they thought that this frontal display was actually a nursery. 
but it's actually just some odds and ends of, of interest that we've put out the front. And, uh, and up here we have a boxes and topiary sort of section and that's like a big spiral box and then there's lots of little boxes like uh, six inch pot English boxes and, and, and like range is important. What happens here is people come here and they don't know what sort of box they want. They don't know whether they want a Japanese box or a, a Korean box or a, or a Tom Thumb which is a kind of a fake box or a privet box or an English box and, and then once they make up their mind they might think well gee I need 50 of those and what's, what's, we'll, we'll have um, most of your different boxes in three or four different sizes and not only do we have them in three or four different sizes but we have we have them some some here by the thousand, some by the hundred. So basically, most people can come in, make up their mind which sort of box they want, what size they want, and then say, "Give me fifty of them, or give me sixty, or whatever they want." So, so that's with things like box ranges important, and even with things like these standards, we've got standards starting at twenty nine ninety nine, right up to great big big sizes. So if you're putting your house on the market, there's you know big instant items that you can put there. And, and look fabulous, like mm. like a big uh, standard like this. Yeah. Are and you saying like, you could start really small and cheap, or you could go big and grand and have it established yeah. looking straight away? That's right. We we give people a choice. We don't, you know, it's not like like we have with standard ficus. I think that the base the base product is is twenty nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. You know, nice three footer, little yeah. head on it, little thin stem. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who wants a dozen and starting out on a new house, fantastic. Yeah. But then you get the guy who's you know putting a, a posh house on the market in, in, in a city or something like that, and he might go for something big. And you've got the choice. And and then he might want two of them, or he might want six of them. And and we've got we've got the volume here to to, to satisfy. Mm. And the range, right? Yeah, range and volume and 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 choices. Excellent. Cool. And, and that here we're in the edible section and the edibles start off with olives on this side and then you've got all different fruit trees along here and then you come down here and, you, and we've got, the, we've got a, a real keen tomato buyers are just buying a few tomatoes at the moment so we've got a little range of tomatoes and then there's all different sorts of herbs there quite a few, but several thousand herbs and, and all different sorts of herbs and that's one of the most popular or frequented spots in the whole nursery but you'll find again range of sizes like little tiny figs uh, citrus we've got a whole range all your popular citrus are here in a five liter in the large size and like here, here's uh, here's uh, quite a few uh, a big load of English box just going out into the box section there um, nice six inch stuff but but with the citrus you've got a good range in the dwarf sizes and then you've got a good range in the larger sizes so if you've got a bigger property you go for the big ones and if you're growing in a pot on a balcony or you've just got a, a very tiny backyard. We've got we've got the dwarf ones, and we've got quite a few dwarf fruit trees. But you've got in the in the edible section, you'll find berries, you'll find um, all sorts of stuff. Now coming here, this is this is what I'd call cool climate tropical. So these are things that can go outdoors happily. We're just moving, and still a few lemons left here. But you're just moving into stuff that gives you that lush tropical look, but happy outdoors and. And, and one of our most popular plants in that category is birds of paradise. And, and you can see we've got hundreds of them in stock and they started little tiny ones down there for six bucks and medium ones for around $30 and, and, and big ones right through. Um, and then you've got, if you look down there, giant birds of paradise and all different sorts of palms, clivias, um, there's African milk cactus, which is which could be used indoors or outdoors. A lot of this stuff could be used indoors or outdoors, the choice of yours. Um, and uh, but that, that's your sort of outdoor cool Excellent. tropical. Then I just stop you to ask a question, Chris. Um, Wendy asks, I have a standard ficus that has gone black on top. Would that be burnt from frost? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and as long as it. If, if it's gone all black, as long as you've got some green, it'll bounce right back with a bit of warmth. Cool. All right, Liz asked, do we have weeping cherries? Sure do. We've got weeping cherries starting at 50 bucks for one about this big, mm -hmm. right up to, and then we've got all different sizes. The most popular one at the moment is the $100 size, which mm -hmm. is sort of a nice, nice young, healthy one like that. Cool. And you've got your $100 size, and then they go right up to $600, and you get a beautiful one with a thick stem and a great big head on cool. it that, that takes two blokes to lift. All right, no worries. Um, Liz, we're going to pass through the weeping cherries in a bit, so stay tuned. Yep. Um, Sing Sing asked, evergreen fast-growing tree. Um, the fastest of them is we've got a, a thing called Ulnus durilensis, or evergreen older, 
and they are fully, you could buy one of those about this big and if you kept the grass and weeds away, fertilise it and pump the water into it, you grow that five metres in one year and I've seen it done. Awesome, hope that helps. Um, Liz asks, how much are your birds of paradise? Uh, they start at six bucks for the, well, that, this is your, the one with the bright orange flower, starts at six bucks mm -hmm. and they go up to around a hundred dollars for the big multi, multi planted ones uh -huh. and, and the main, the biggest seller is our eight inch pot which is about that big uh -huh. and I think they're thirty two ninety nine. Okay cool. And we just got some giant birds in didn't we? Yeah, we, well the other thing when people say they often think of giant birds and at the moment I've got them coming in from northern New South Wales and I've got them up this tall for ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, six. They're in a ten inch pot, and they're like that for ninety nine bucks. Big, great, big, lush, leafy ones. Cool. All right. Hope that helps, Liz. Uh, we'll continue. Feel free to drop questions if you have them, guys. We'll answer them as we go. Now we're going into one of my favourite areas, and this is the the, the cottage section. Uh -huh. And um, and here you've got you've got four inch cottage and there's quite a range in four inch pots nice cheap entry point we've got a kind of a mini cheap cottage section out the front which with all the 6.99 stuff in it this stuff here is a little bit classier better labeled and 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 a lot of it's um the pbr and the, and the specialist stuff but but lots of lots of lots of nice color and very easy to make a nice cottage garden in fact our our cottage garden section is probably nearly as big as some people's, uh, some, some small country nurseries or something like that. It's, it's quite large. So this is all cottage plants through here. And now we're starting to, to go into um, sort of colourful foliage plants. And, and, and here you've got your, your forbias and, and you've got your kaleidoscope and you've got your caprosmas. That's, um, and, and, and these are great, like a lot of people want um, they come in and they say I want colour all year and instead of selling them flowers I, I'll, I'll offer them coloured foliage plants and you'll see coloured foliage plants here chalk sticks are great lovely silver blue then you've got all of your cordial lines there which are kind of like small palm trees with lovely colourful foliage and along here you've got flaxes um, so, so there, that's, that's your colourful foliage section. And then you've got a few of your sculptural plants. You can see your gymea lilies and things over here. Mm -hmm. Now, come down here this way. Um, on the left here, you've got ground covers. And, and we, we uh, propagate a lot of ground covers ourselves. And we have, and we have, ground, and, and we have ground covers very, very cheap because a lot of people these days have got such small areas of lawn they don't really want grass. They want to have something like a, a white creeping thyme or a silver lawn. So we, we mass produce and have a lot of the, um, the different ground covers very, very cheap for people who want to make lawns or put pavers in and put some lawns, you know, a lawn, a no mow type lawn around their, around their pavers and things. Cool. Now, here, uh, Vicky asks, where are we located? Uh, we're, 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 um, we're at 1477 Sydney Road, Campbellfield. And which is kind of like if you're right on the other side of town, you could say it's near the airport, you know, like it's, it's sort of you sort of head out towards the airport and then sort of head off to your right a bit, you know. Cool. All right, I hope that helps. Um, you can also Google us. That has all of our information, website, phone number, address. Uh, so hope that helps. Vicky, um, Julie asked, do you transport to regional Victoria? We do. We actually will show you. We've got six vans uh, that we start off at the front with one of the vans. We've got six vans and we... And if you spend over three hundred dollars, we actually cover most of the population regions of Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you spend over three hundred bucks, we do a free delivery. So we're at the Shepparton, Bendigo, Ballarat, all those places every week. Cool. Um, hope that helps, Julie. Uh, Liz asked the same thing, but at what cost? Um, it's well, you within. You'd have to check, like if you, if you say you lived in Stall or something like that, you'd have to check with one of my. Um, one of my salespeople, and they can give you a price. But we've got a, we've got the main population regions of Victoria. We've got them covered. Spend over three hundred bucks and get a free delivery. Cool. And and then if you didn't spend over three hundred, if you spent less than three hundred, I think the delivery to the country regions is forty nine ninety nine. Okay. Awesome. Hope that helps, Liz. I will continue. Okay. So here, here, this is one of my one of my favourite areas. Is right right through the middle of this um, shade house here. We've got really interesting oddball things that you don't normally find at your local nursery, like things like hollies. Uh, this is a this is a thing called a beauty bush, and it has these amazing little pearl-like flowers. And then 
around Melbourne and all around the place you've got the, um, the flowering quince in blossom. It's sort of a scraggly looking plant that has amazing blossom at this time of year, one of the first blossoms and we've got those in all different colours. But you'll find, you'll find all sorts of interesting things that, like what's really popular at the moment is mock oranges. So through here all those sorts of things that you often can't find in a nursery anymore or not expecting to find you'll find here now. Cool. Um, and and there are those weeping cherries, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So here, here we've got the, the nursery is actually full of weeping cherries. I reckon I must have about a thousand weeping cherries in the nursery at the moment, and you've got them in all different sizes. These big ones like that—that's a two hundred dollar size there. Good, a pretty good, and that's going to blossom nicely this spring. And then we go into this area here, and this, and we're going past something exciting here. One of my favourite plants is a crazy filbert. And what happens with your crazy filbert is just before it starts to leaf up, it gets beautiful catkins hanging all over it and they hang down through these claws of wood. And then after that, it'll have these lovely crinkly leaves and a really interesting thing to have in a pot or have in the garden. Mm. And we're going to be giving away one of these to a lucky listener who answers a simple question about a, our nursery at the end of this, at the end of this thing. But cool. in this area here, this is a deciduous tree area and we carry a really good range I was actually brought up in a tree nursery and I'm kind of really into trees and we carry, have a really good range of trees. Um, you know, you name it, golden, rubinia, silver, and we've got them qu from quite small sizes, you know, where they're around the $30 mark up to great big sizes, but plums, uh, cherry blossoms, all sorts of things. Awesome. All right. Um, Julie asks, how do you pick a healthy weeping cherry? Um, what do you reckon I, about the soil? Is that really important? How do you pick, like, no, I think she means when you go to the shop, how do you mm. pick a healthy one? How I would pick a healthy one, it's one with a thick stem. One with a thick stem um, is likely to have a good, strong root system. Like, I think, I think you can sort of, you can almost look at a stem and know what the roots are like. And then you'd look for a nice, strong growth in the head, like good, strong, long, long growths in the head. A lot of people would worry about if there was a little bend in it, but I don't worry about the bend so much. I'd look for a nice, thick, strong stem and for good long growths in the head. Okay, awesome. Hope that helps, Julie. Uh, Sophie asked, I have viburnum, um, viburnum sweet, quick fence, 1.8 metres high across my back fence with a 1.5 metre hole in it um, <clears throat> as I removed an apple crab tree. Do you sell mature viburnum or can you recommend another plant? We have a service called a price and availability. What I'll do is I'll, I'll give it to our P&A pe person and we'll, we'll see if we can track one down for you. Cool. I, ha I know I've got, I've got lots of different viburnums here and lots of big ones, but I don't think I've got a big quick fence here at the moment. I think my biggest quick fence would only be about 80 to 90 centimetres. All right. No worries. So if you get in touch and we'll help you out. Yeah. Now, I was just, just going to come, come down here. Mm -hmm. Where are you taking us? This is sort of tucked away, tucked away here. This is a, a shady spot in the nursery, and uh, it's a great spot for putting mondos and liriopes. We, we have three things here. This is a baby's tears display. You've got green and gold baby's tears here. Most people have never even seen golden baby's tears, but that's a lovely ground cover for the shade. And then. Um, and then to carry all the different types of liriopes, it actually, uh, this display here would be, I don't know, it'd have to be 80 metres long. And it starts off with giant liriope down the bottom, then all different sorts of Munro white liriope, stripy white liriope, coming up into tall mondo, actually that's El, that's El Marco, which is your dwarf liriope. And then you go into your black mondo, your tall mondos, your dwarf mondos. Wow. Um, so, and, and, and again, the theory is, is that we get customers come in, they don't know which sort of Mondo or Liriope they want, and they work out what they want, and then the next thing they want, they want 20 or 30 of them. And so basically we, and, and we have to work really hard to keep this area full, like, that, like it just disappears. Um, because there's not many places you can go and get and, and sort of work out, have a choice of all the different sorts, and then say, look, give me 50 of that one. It doesn't always work, but you know, like if we ain't got it here, we can have it here in a matter of days. And as we come out of here, the other, one of the most popular plants in the nursery is Nandina. And if you go through our Nandina section, and it looks a bit, after a busy weekend, it's a bit gutted, but the Nandina section, we have, I know we have seven or eight different sorts of Nandina. Mm. So you've got, you've got real choices with your Nandina, and you've actually got people here who actually know about the different Nandinas. Um, 
I think and your lemon lime's the latest one, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's the the, the latest. That's the hardest one to keep on the shelf. They they fly out the door. Beautiful thing. Mm. So then then we at, at, once we come down here, we're into the grass section. Actually, the grass section extends right up there. The grass section is the size of the average small nursery, I think. Um, and and we still we don't really have enough space for all the grasses that people want. Um, but you've got all different grasses all through here, native grasses and exotic grasses. And, uh, and grasses seem to be, I remember years ago, um, a guy told me that grasses were finished and that was like about 15 years ago and, and they're far from finished. They're really, really popular. They seem more popular than ever before. So, and then we come down here and this is, um, this is a funny little corner. This is native climbers and we're sort of heading towards our native area and native ground covers. Then come in here, this is our kind of like, um, the staff call this the overflow area. And basically, basically when I see a good deal on something, I'll, and often to get a good deal, I might have to buy 500 or 1,000 of something, or you see that the industry is running short of, of some sort of plant, I might snap up all the ones that are available and these get stacked up in the in the overflow section like there's a little bit of a shortage of cherries for this spring so you'll see I've got four or five hundred weeping cherries here ready to because they'll be hard to get this spring and uh, and and Asiatic jasmine's going crazy people are using that as a ground cover and, and I've got three or four hundred there because you know people come in and they want six sixty or eighty at a time so we need to keep a big lot of those here and and over there I've got beautiful five foot uh, little gem magnolias and, and to, to get them in, in the place at a good price I had to sort of snap up I think 500 of them or something mm. like that. So, so this is our overflow uh, and it's where the staff deal with the, the big purchases that we make. Cool. <clears throat> Excellent. And the question that the staff most often ask me is that truckload after truckload rolls in is where are we going to put it? <laughs> That's the big question. And it mostly here. ends up here, eh? Yeah. Oh, well, the, the things go everywhere. But, uh, uh, but the big question here is always where are we going to put it? And uh, now um, this is the native section. And we're lucky to have such a big, we sort of took up this spot years ago. And we're lucky to have such a big, um, such a big, such a big space so close to the city. Um, we're really only 15 minutes from the airport and, 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 you know, like you go down across the freeway there and you're, you're into the inner suburbs and, and we've got, I think maybe an acre and a half of land here. And this area here is our native section and it's a size, our native section is the size of a, of a small nursery. And over here, you've got all eucalypts and acacias and, and all your bigger natives. Um, you'd see, uh, that's a, um, um, a native frangipani and then but just like here this this table here is banksias and and every time I look at this table I find some new banksia that I've never seen before like really really interesting and there's small banksias and large banksias fast banksias and slow banksias um, this is a great little hedging native this is called um, I use these all the time in my garden designs Mr. Green Sheen beautiful and lush but really tough and fast fantastic plant mm. Uh, Liz um, asks, what's your favourite all-time plant? Oh gee, that's really tough. Had to be a childhood one, right? Mm. I think um, when I was younger I did an enormous amount of work on Polonia and, um, and I imported all different sorts and, and experimented, tissue cultured them, bred them, named them, uh, brought out a plant called the Pouton Sapphire Dragon, which I, I sent all over the world. And, and your Pouton Sapphire Dragon has, has a big flower spike this big with two or three hundred flowers on it. It's a, it, it can grow five or six metres in a year. It's, it's amazing. And I think, I think that would have to be my favourite plant, hmm. the old Pouton Sapphire Dragon. There you go, Liz. Let us know your favourite plant too. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, so through the, through the native section here, um, calistamins, and, and again, I mean, every time I go through the calistamin section, I'll find a new calistamin. There's, there's heaps and heaps of different calistamins here. And, uh, and then grevilleas. The grevillea section is absolutely enormous. Um, there's ground covers, big ones, all different sorts. 
and um, and what's at the moment the leucodendron section is looking the best it's ever looked. The the main problem we have with leucodendrons is getting enough for the customers, and what's funny is that it, is that we have the leucodendron section in the native section because native buyers love leucodendrons, and. For some, I think Australia was once attached to South Africa as a continent and then it drifted apart and somehow these seem to be considered by most people as, as perfectly acceptable to put in their native garden and, um, and they seem to work and add a bit of colour to your native garden so, for, so we actually have our leucodendron section in the native area and I'm amazed how many people actually think leucodendrons are natives. So kangaroo paws, you'll find 30 or 40 different sorts and we try and keep it, all the popular ones, we try and keep 20 or 30 of them because people often need 10, 15, whatever. We try and keep 20 or 30 of each colour because people often need 10 or 15 or 8 or 6 or 7 or so they need numbers of, of one variety to make a real impact with their, with their kangaroo paws. Cool. Then here you come into Westringer and Corriers. And, uh, and Westringers are amazing. We, we sell them by the truckload because I think they're so tough and they're so handy for putting into, um, you know, big commercial jobs and things like that. Cool. Liz said um, crepe myrtle is a favourite plant. It's a good choice. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I love crepe myrtles too because you've got blossom, you've got autumn colour, you've got a beautiful, shapely, small tree and you've got really fabulous bark on them. So I, I love them and particularly their coma, I think, has the nicest pattern on the, on the trunk. Now here, these days, one of the most popular hedging plants, actually the number one hedging plant we keep over here, this is your, your ficus flash. And, and we have ficus flash from little tiny ones up to great big ones, as you can see down here. And then here, you've got your viburnum, your sweet viburnum, and, and they, 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 people have maybe got a little tired of batosrums and, 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 and lily pillies and things like that. And this seems to be the, the really popular hedge and a lot of people also uh, with the two-story houses and, and, and big developments and things like that a lot of people are dealing with shade and viburnum is great for shade and it's also great for putting underneath uh, another tree like if you want a hedge that'll grow under another tree whereas a lot of you say your, your ficus for instance really doesn't like being planted under other trees. Now we're going into I love to come down here what ha where we are now is we're in our um, our dispatch centre, and and when you come down here, we, we've got plants coming in from Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, um, and and I normally every time I come in here, I'll find something that I've never seen before, or something of, of really great interest, and um, it's looking rather fresh in here. Yeah, and yeah. and so. This, this whole middle section here gets filled up three or four times a week and then it gets sorted where people have placed orders, the plants go over, over into the far, this section over here, these are all orders waiting to be delivered or picked up mm -hmm. and they, they go over there. But this whole middle section here, these roll in off our trucks and then, um, and this is all stock coming in here today. So all this comes, comes in here and it gets priced, it gets sorted, maybe goes into, into somebody's order or it's or it goes out into stock and and the sort of volume that you see in here would move we'd move three three to five times a, a week we'd move this sort of volume mm. into the store so cool. there's an i can't believe how much stock actually rolls in here every week and and seems to disappear yeah there's a lot um shell asked a question i know you're in the native section at the moment do you think a native garden is the easiest garden to set up and to maintain in melbourne Not quite, not quite, but but it would be one of the easiest. And particularly, okay. what I like about about I I I worked at Ostra Flora for a little while, about forty five years ago, and all the plants that they were growing and selling back in those days were things that turned into monsters, and people had to go out and trim them and chainsaw them, and you know try and and it was hard to get in the front door, you know, once you planted a few of them. Natives, you mean, yeah? Yeah, natives, yeah. Mm. And Ostra Flora was a big native nursery forty five years ago in Melbourne, and at any rate, since then, um, we've got lots of 
natives that have compact shapes, low growing, you know, what you call cultivars, where people have selected and bred them and then named them. And so well designed, there's some fabulous native products around and, and really you can make a very easy native garden that's not going to get out of hand, which that wasn't possible 20 or 30 years ago. So, okay. so, so native gardens really are easy, Maybe perhaps not the easiest of all gardens, mm -hmm. but they are very easy to make a, a, a garden that is easy and cheap to set up and then, then easy to maintain and keep. But, cool. it, but it's a matter of choosing the right plants. Okay, so if you don't think it is the easiest to set up and maintain, what do you think is? I was thinking something simple like, um, like English box and, and roses and just a mm. very, you know, yeah, box classic right. yeah, Melbourne sort of your, yeah. your, your classic Melbourne garden, which okay. is your English box and roses and a few standards and things like that, are very easy to set up and very easy to look after. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, Shell, if you want to read up more on that, we have lots of info around those topics in our blog on our website at hellohello.com.au. Um, Sarah asked, do you think a viburnum or a lily pilly would generally be the best for a smaller garden in respect to smaller root systems? Um, certainly a well-chosen lily pilly, and there's some really good ones. Acmena smithoi cultivars tend to stay fairly compact and not get out of hand. Um, but viburnum's probably even better, you know, like it, so they but they choose the right lily pilly, it's good, and, and viburnum's, viburnum's are good because they're not really, a lot of the things pl being planted for hedges are really trees, and your viburnum is really just a big bush. Cool. Hope that helps, Sarah. Uh, Julie asks, what is a good tree as a feature in a standard rose garden? Something that isn't a lot of work and matches well with roses, soil, etc. I love weeping cherry, cherry plums, Japanese maple. Right, okay. So I, if I was planting standard roses, I wouldn't use a weeping tree, mm -hmm. but certainly an upright cherry like a Kanzan, you know, one that grows up like that, or a Kanzan. You want something that's not too, not too dominant. Um, I was helping a lady yesterday and, and she wanted to put a forest pansy in and, and, and we were mm. saying that that's a good compact size. So things like a forest pansy or a grafted maple like a Senkaki or an mm -hmm. Atropurpureum, um, like one with per that's one with purple leaves, but you, so if but if you're doing low roses, mm. I'll often put a weeping cherry in, like like yeah. I think so with low roses, like carpets, yeah, carpet rose or even low bush roses okay. are fine, and you put a but but what happens if you put standard roses in with a weeping cherry, um, they they kind of conflict with each other. Okay, cool. Hope that helps, Julie, and we'll. And we better push on with our with our journey. But always, I always find an education coming down to this area here. There's, there's always lots and lots to see. And, um, and you're seeing plants from everywhere. Okay, there is a lot going on down here. What's next, Chris? Okay, so this is, as we come up from here, we're now in the hedging section and you start off here, you've got Fatinias, you see all that bright red growth there, where it's mostly Fatinia red robin and Fatinia robusta, and we keep, you know, quite a few ones in small and big sizes. This is orange, orange jessamine, and we're a bit low on those at the moment. They've gone crazy, and all, they've all sold out just about. And Diosma, which are good for a, a lovely little flowering hedge, and then you go into your lily pilly section here. Um, Abelias, we've got three or four different sorts of abelia. Um, we've got five or six different sorts of Indian hawthorn, um, like your oriental pearls, your snow maidens. And then, and then you go into your bamboos and, um, and you find we keep 10 or 15 different sorts of bamboos and we keep them in all different sizes. So our bamboo section's always absolutely crammed full. And then here we've, we've got the, if you walk through our nursery, you'll find everywhere you'll find maples because people love to walk around and just find that just right shaped maple or that right size maple mm. but this is the actual maple section which only holds half of our maple so the rest is scattered but through here you'll find lots of interesting varieties of maples um, uh, mostly Japanese varieties there's, there's probably 40 or 50 different sorts of Japanese maple in here and this is all still maples here and then here you're up into your conifer section and in your conifer section, there's hedging conifers, there's avenue conifers, and then there's, there's specimen or individual conifers. Okay. Um, 
How, how long until um, the maples start showing their leaves? Um, most of them end of September. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So let's let's come up here. We'll go back through the cottage section again. Mm -hmm. If you turn that around, you'll get it up there. Right. Cool. So, um, so this is this is your cottage section which we've seen before, um, and we're going to go through the through the through the uh, quarter lines. Um, this is a this is a plant that I like. This is a tree aloe, and this grows. This is a sort of a succulenty thing that grows up into a large tree, and these are gymea lilies, which you know, make a real show. And we keep lots and lots of agave here as well. Now this area here is really our our deciduous tree area, and if you look through here, you'll see um, lots of um, these ones here. They are Norwegian maples, Acer globosum, and they grow into a lovely ball on a stick with a lovely maple leaf. And these are great if you need, you know, a lovely ball on a stick at an entrance or something like that. Really, really good. And um, and you've got all different sorts of assorted Japanese maples and things like that. But you've got all bare-rooted pears and cherries and maples all through here. And then this is all. This is all. Um, this is all different sorts of deciduous trees. Like there's, uh, there's lots of Lagostromias. Now we have lag lots of Lagostromias, which is your crepe myrtle. We have them in small sizes, but we also have them in advanced sizes. Um, flowering cherries, um, flowering crab apples, um, and, and then more of your bare rooted. Mm. Um, and bare rooted, we'll keep them here for about another month, and then they'll all have to be potted. Yep. So you've really only got a month to get your bare rooted bargains. Yeah. And then if you come in here, the area down there is for, for stuff being dispatched. This area here is for plants that are um, for pickup. So where a customer orders something and, and, and says, I want to pick it up, this is where they come to pick it up in here. So it's a pick up, a pick cool. up zone. Well, uh, Simona has a question. She says, um, best plant for a small front stone yard, please. For a small front stone yard, please. Stone yard. Yeah. Um, so maybe a garden bed with stones around it, or or maybe maybe sort of a front yard that's covered in stones. Hmm. You might like something like uh, something with a um, a sort of a a sculptural shape. Like I love the variegated Mexican lily. It has it's a big lily with great big wide leaves and has lovely golden stripes through it mm -hmm. and something like the or something like the tree halo that I showed before okay cool all right um, Robert asks for a hedge between 1.5 to 2 meters would Portuguese laurel or bay tree be suitable how right. are the root systems on these okay both of those have quite small root systems if you keep them trimmed and don't let them get too big um, the uh, Portuguese laurel needs moderately good soil. The bay, the bay tree will grow on almost any soil. So if you've got moderately good to very good soil, you'll find the Portuguese laurel is absolutely fabulous. Okay. And, um, but they're both, they're both beautiful trees and they both end up very similar looking. The great joy of your Portuguese laurel is that it has the most beautiful, when you see a Portuguese laurel hedge, beautifully trimmed Portuguese laurel hedge, all in flower in springtime with lovely white, white sort of catkin like flowers, it looks like little cat's tails covered, it looks absolutely fabulous. So so it's a real show, uh, the Portuguese laurel and and the main thing I think, you know, sort of average to very good soil for the Portuguese laurel. Cool. Hope that helps Simona and Robert. Uh, we'll continue. Now where are we headed, Chris? Uh, now we're heading into the sales area. Now, just here we've got a range of potting mixes and, and mulches and things like that. And then here we've got our, our sales area. And, uh... Yep. Hi, Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks. I'll see you shortly. Yeah. Right, so this is, this is the sales area. So if you ring up with an inquiry, you want to know how much something is or whether we've got something in stock or whether we can get some special thing for you. Uh, we've got uh, five people employed today and sometimes we'll have six people employed to help with inquiries and, and finding things and 
taking orders and organising deliveries, etc. So, um, so this is where this is where it all comes through. Cool. Awesome. What's next? Oh, and then then here, you've got our indoor section, and uh, and you'll find lots of lots of interesting and popular indoor plants here, like your your mother-in-law's tongue, and um, and your. Bromeliad? Bromeliad, that's it. Cool. And, yeah, and this, this one here is the purple plum bromeliad, um, or silver plum bromeliad, no. And uh, rubber trees, palm trees, all, all, of your indoor, all of your indoor plants are here. Uh -huh. So. Um, and that would leave the garden design area. Yeah, and so here, here this is, this is where I do my garden designs. And, um, oh, and this is, the hot spot here on the, particularly on the weekend, I think last Saturday I might have done nine garden designs. And um, some people book ahead and some people slot themselves in. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and there'll, be, there'll be Lily and myself working here and, um, and we can do up to nine garden designs in a day. Mm -hmm. Cool. Alrighty guys, let us know if you've enjoyed that tour. Now, uh, in a minute or two, after you've asked any more questions you have, Chris is going to ask a question that will um, win you the crazy filbert. Right, okay. Right. So ask your questions now and we will get on to the giveaway in a second. Uh, uh, Jody said, thank you, tour was awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> Actually, what we should do, let's go have a look. We, we, we'll show them the, the, our, 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 our van, our delivery system. Okay, cool. Come on, we'll have a look. Just one last thing before we wrap up. If you have any questions, now is the time, guys. So drop them below. You have... So we've got, we've got six of these vans here. Mm -hmm. So if you see a big van with free delivery around, it's yeah, we've got six of these vans and it's locked up. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so six of these vans, they've got a shelving system in them, and and vans like this go out to Bendigo, Ballarat, they go out to Tarragon. So it's a great thing to come to the nursery, but you can ring up an order, get online and order, um, and and have access to, you know, quarter of a million plants and all these varieties. And, and the thing is that. Um, we, we, you can see when you look in our dispatch area that we've got plants coming in from everywhere every day and so if we haven't got it, likely we can get it in a few days. So, so uh, whether, whether I've got it in stock now or whether we're, you know, we're, we're dealing with so many growers and got so many plants coming in, it's very, very easy to get an extra couple of whatever you want. So, um, so ring, ring them up here, get online, whatever, and you can get what you want through here and, 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 and we can deliver. And free delivery is over most of the population populated areas yeah. of Victoria. And all you got to do is spend 300 bucks, yeah. which is not hard to do around here, as no. you've seen. Um, Jody asks, what bamboo is not invasive? Um, there's a whole range of them. There's two basic sorts of bamboo. There's a bamboo that sort of puts a long cane out and then shoots up like that, and that's your, that's called a running bamboo. And we don't sell any of those sorts of bamboo. Um, they used to be really popular back in the 70s, but people found that they caused problems in their gardens. We sell um, probably eight or nine different bamboos, and they're all called what's called a clumping bamboo. And so what it is, you've got your bamboo cane like that, and the next bamboo cane that comes up just comes up next to it like that. And if you don't want that, you can chop it off. But how the old running bamboo used to work is you'd plant one, and, and it'd grow nicely, and you'd be real happy, and then next thing the lady would come over from next door and she'd be all upset with you said oh look a bamboo just popped up in the middle of my rose garden so the old running bamboo used to just pop up wherever that was always a big <laughs> surprise you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah radio <right here. laughs> hope that helps jody um liz asked uh, do the garden designs cost do crepe myrtles clash with maples and what's the best plant to go with crepe myrtles hmm. i mean the well, garden designs are free uh that well actually Almost. 
Mm -hmm. What it is, is that with a 20 minute design, and I can do like a small front or back garden or do a patio or do or solve some big problem that you've got in the garden in one of the short designs, we charge 50 bucks. And then that 50, and then when you spend over $250, that 50 bucks comes off. And then if for one where we're doing like front and back on a house or doing a really big garden bed or a big frontage or something like that, we charge $100 for a 45 minute one. And then what happens is that when you spend over five hundred dollars, you've got that hundred dollars comes off. So, yeah. um, so it's just a deposit that goes towards so, the. Yeah. So, so because the idea is, is that the the free garden design is aimed at people who want to buy their plants, and so so they the the, the, the it's really just a deposit. It's really just a deposit that um, that comes off, and then plants to go with a crepe myrtle. Um, I think that uh, something like Chinese star jasmine is a lovely ground cover to put underneath. Um, things like Laura Petal and Plum Gorgeous make a lovely sort of densely shaped purple mound. And, um, and, and then I love the Kaleidoscope Abelia for a bit of bright colour underneath. And I think that, I think that the sort of the, the, your crepe myrtle has that sort of maple kind of fine foliage and has that sort of maple, nice autumn colour, beautiful bark, beautiful sort of shape to it. And I actually think that maples and crepe myrtles go beautifully together. I think that they can be blended really nicely in a garden. Awesome. Hope that helps, Liz. Um, Sophie said, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Steve-O said, which type of flower plants do you suggest that require minimal watering? Flowers for minimal watering. You know, um, I'm a great lover of the original pink carpet rose. It's a really, really deep pink. And I've seen developers plant them around Melbourne in quite tough locations <clears throat> and then abandon them there and never water them and seen them flourish year after year after year and flower fabulously. So they do love a little bit of a drink, but they, they, they would be one of the best plants to grow without water. Cool. There you go, Steve-O. Um, pink carpet rose, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Uh... You're welcome, Jody. Um, Alicia said, best plants for around an outdoor area in full sun, cottage style. Cottage style. Most of your, almost everything in the cottage, you know, things like your sea lavender, your seaside daisy, your lavender, your rosemary. Um, I've kind of, I get crushes on plants. And I, I kind of really sort of fallen for the old fashioned lantana. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we've got lovely purple and white lantanas and they're really, really tough and really good. But so, so lantana in purple or white, um, all, all of those, and, and I mentioned the carpet rose uh, and the carpet rose comes in about five different colors. I like the soft pink, the dark pink and the white best, yep. but uh, carpet roses are good for that too. Cool, hope that helps Alicia. And um, don't be afraid to come in and ask for help because we're happy to help and you can come check out the whole range in person. Um, Steve said thank you. Julie said, could you put a maple and or crepe myrtle with standard roses? Yeah, I think so. Like it's a weeping tree that I won't put with standard roses. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think a maple or crepe myrtle would be fine. Okay, cool. Um, Shakar said uh, pond plant options, which can grow both in pots or in small decorative ponds. Uh, pots or small. Ah, <clears throat> uh, your um. You've got big and small, um, what do you call it, papyrus. And your papyrus is real happy in a pot and real happy um, in, in, in the water. Um, and, and also all of your different irises and also different mondo grasses and some of your liriobes are quite happy to be in the water or in a pot. Cool. Awesome. Hope that helps, Shakar. Um, no worries, Julie. Happy to help. Alrighty. There's no more questions. I think we'll get on to the giveaway now. Right, okay. So, what I want to ask yeah. is no worries, how much Liz. do you have to spend in most parts of Victoria to get a free delivery? Okay, first person to answer that question. Did you hear it? One more time, Chris. How first much, person. Yeah, how much, the first person to tell me how much you have to spend in most parts of Victoria to get a free delivery from Hello, Hello. Alrighty, Jody, have you won this before? Um, when, we're only giving it away to someone who hasn't won it before. So if that's you, Jody, well done. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy, you've already won one, so <laughs> but you're um you're on the ball. Alrighty guys. Thanks for coming to the live. I think that'll be it. And um goodbye, goodbye. Yeah, and you'll be and we'll be uh, you'll be able to come in and pick up or, or get a free delivery on your on your crazy filbert. Yep.
All right, so, just get so in let touch. Him, let them know. Let them know whether you want to pop in and pick it up or whether you want to um, have it delivered. Cool. No worries. Get in touch and we'll figure that out for you. We're at 1477 Sydney Road, Campbellfield. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time.